I'm going to make a home for this here printer to keep it out of the dust. On a sliding drawer and out of sight. Coming up. I'm Roger and welcome to the shop. But what I'm going to be doing in this video is making a custom enclosure for this here printer. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you probably always wonder what that black thing is that's sitting over there. It's actually a uh, laser printer, just black and white, it's not color. And I share my shop here with our uh, shipping area for our e-commerce business, uh, which is shipping plants and stuff all over the country. And we use this uh, printer here frequently to uh, print out orders that don't get processed down in the office and come in later. We can print them here. I can reprint things and it gets used quite a bit uh, during the season. It's October now and at the end of October we're off season. So I figured it was time to uh, make an enclosure for this. And I'm going to show you where I'm going to put it here in a minute. Uh, one of the problems we have is aside from the table saw being right here and creating dust and sawdust and everything that floats around, like we always have to keep a cover on this thing. The cover's not on it right now because I was just using it. But from the other side, where we do all of our shipping, we create a lot of dust over there too, which is very fine dust from uh, planting media and dirt and paper and cardboard and everything. It's just it's a very fine dust. So we have to uh, also protect it from that dust, protect it from the dust over here. Uh, we've got two different workstations that I'm, I'm going to show you one of them here in a minute. And I'm going to use some space that's underneath that workstation make a cabinet for this that will be ventilated and filtered then I'll be able to open the drawer a door and have the actual have the printer on a drawer so I can pull it out if I need to service it or change the toner cartridge or use the scanner portion there's also a scanner and copier on this uh, the only time that it ever gets used is if I'm maybe copying something as a scroll saw pattern but it's it's handy to have but I need to protect it from the dust uh, this is probably the eighth printer we've had out here in the last uh, probably 20 years and this one's held up pretty good uh, we found out with the dust and everything inkjet out here just doesn't last the laser has done good but I do want to make an enclosure for it and put it in a better place I'll give you a little tour here next and show you where I'm going to put it and what some of my ideas are okay here's a view of the front of that printer and right now it just sits on top of this here file cabinet and this is adjacent to where my workstation is here. And above this, well, we've got a computer screen, we've got a label printer. And above that is where our uh, network switching is for everything we do out here in the shipping department. You know, the other side of this place is an absolute disaster. Uh, I've been trying to move stuff around and get a little few things organized. Kind of an impromptu shop tour. But uh, over there is the other workstation. And that's uh, where we also ship stuff from and everything gets packed roughly along there and then the final shipping is done on this little side table right here next to this desk well this desk backed up so we can get the whole thing in the picture here is uh do one of them cheapos you no tools required just bang it together with a hammer and i've made some modifications i put a good wood top on it well, actually, it's a picture of wood on a piece of particle board. And I've recently uh, just made a drawer front. There's a big drawer that slides under there, but because the sheet metal is so weak, it would bow all the time. So I made a wood front for it. Underneath this, uh, this is where we store our bulk tape. And we buy it almost by the pallet in the spring. And then I'll open a few cartons. We'll store the rolls under there and use them as needed. But on this other side over here, it was just kind of a catch-all for different kinds of spray bottles and stuff, which I have sitting on the floor. My idea is to put the uh, printer down here in a cabinet that would be ventilated and filtered with a door on the front and then a drawer I can pull out for, like I say, when I need to uh, service it. If I'm just using it for printing, I can just open the door and uh, pull the prints out. But that's my idea. And what I'm going to be using is uh, pretty much scraps of plywood to make this. So I've had this little stack of uh, what they call a B-grade Baltic birch, which I picked up uh, somewhere quite a while back. And uh, I think that would be a good way to use this up. It just sits here and collects dust, obviously. 
I haven't really found a good project for it. I've got these plus uh, another stack over on uh, the other part of the shop. So this is what I'm going to use to make most of that cabinet with. Might do something a little more spiffy with a door to match my drawer over there, but this is a plan for the uh, carcass. Okay, since my pieces of Baltic birch were 20 inches by 20 inches, this is half inch thick material. I decided to make the enclosure 20 by 20 and uh, 18 inches high. That's the uh, amount of space I have this way. I've got, uh, actually I have 24 deep, I could have gone, and I could have gone clear 48 wide, but then I lose my uh, storage space for all of our rolls of tape. So what I've done is on the top and bottom, on three sides, I've cut a rabbit. As you can see here, it is a quarter inch deep through the thickness, then a half inch down this way, which allows for Wood will set like that and it'll be flush and it'll be glued and stapled or nailed. I haven't decided which yet, but I did that on three sides. So I did not do that on the front. The front is going to have a, a face frame and a cabinet door. And then on the uh, back piece, I did the same on the two vertical sides, same type of rabbit, and that will set on there like so. And then the sides don't have any rabbits, so they uh, fit into the rabbits that are already have already been cut. And this will all be glued and nailed together. So I'll be doing that next, and then uh, get the top on it, and then I'm going to do some extra reinforcements for the drawer slides and build the drawer. Oh, and in the back, I'm going to put some vents. These, uh, you can buy these at the home store, lumber store, whatever is by you. Um, I happen to have three of these left. I'm probably need to get some more. They require a two inch hole, so I'll lay out uh, three holes across here on the top for ventilation to go out the back, and then I'll have to do some on the sides, but I don't have enough of the vents, so I'll have to get some more. But I'm going to lay out some holes and I'll drill those out. And there's the back. I decided to put the vents down in the back and have the side vents up. I was afraid that uh, otherwise something may uh, block the airflow if something gets stacked next to it, but I know nothing's going to be behind it. Little angle blocks are real handy for uh, making sure you get a good square corner. And they're very easy to make. A little test fit here. I think it looks good. Using tight bond one, just the uh, original tight bond. This won't be exposed to any water or moisture, so I'm not worried about having moisture resistant glue here.
this is one of those places where a glue bot is real handy because you can squirt the glue up. Okay, before I put the top on, I'm going to add some little uh, extra uh, strips in here so that I'll have a little bit more uh, beef when I'm screwing my drawer slides in because this uh, printer is quite heavy. And even though this is going to be down low and the bottom shelf will be right down there at the bottom, um, I don't want the drawer slides to be pulling out. So I'm going to have to cut some strips and get them laid in there. I'm going to be adding a couple strips in here across the bottom for my drawer slides. Got those cut, so they're going to go like that. I'll just be using uh, Tight Bond 1 again glue and then some pin nails just to hold them in place so the glue dries. I think I've heard this called the ninja method of applying glue. I do have a glue spreader, but I'm only doing a couple of these and then I'd have to clean the spreader so this way I won't have to do it and later on I can entertain myself by peeling glue off my fingers. I'll just follow up with a pin nailer. Now I'm set and we're getting ready for the top. Switch guns here. Okay, ready for the top here. So just put some glue on these rabbits and get her put in place and get her tacked down. That was a close one. Had one blow off the back there and almost got my finger. That's the reason you're supposed to keep your hands all the way. And right there's that one that blew out. And I had my finger mighty close to it. Okay, so we'll just let the glue set up.
Okay, for the face frame, I'm going to uh, use some three-quarter inch plywood. I've cut into one-inch strips, and I have the ends mitered here. And yes, I did get my thumb with a nail. It just took a little while for it to really appear. I felt it. I didn't see any blood, so I didn't think it got me, but it did. This is where you find out one of your miters is a little long. Always cut them long. Hard to make them longer if they're too short. It would be better if this was damp, but we'll get the majority of the squeeze out off of there. I'll be sanding this anyway. And if you're wondering about the stuff on my thumb, I'm a retired electrician. That's what electricians do. You get a boo-boo, you put electrical tape on it. Well, I'll buy that. We're not building a space shuttle here. There goes my tape measure. Oh, we got a carcass here. Oh, it's just a matter of letting some more glue dry, and then I'm going to have to uh, find something to make a bottom shelf out of. i got to see what i got around here for parts and pieces. Okay, well that glue's drying, and uh, on the cabinet I decided to make the drawer to see what I had laying around here. All I need is a flat surface for the printer to sit on. Uh, this is just a piece of three-quarter inch particle board with some old shelving from something. It was a piece laying here, it was the right size. Basically, I just cut it down. It was big enough. I uh, bored a hole in the center here so I'd have something to reach in and grab when I want to pull the drawer out. I'm going to put some uh, pieces of half-inch Baltic birch on each side to give it a little bit more strength because I'm not a real big fan of particle board. In fact, uh, I'm going to glue and brad nail this and then I'll probably, when I put my uh, drawer slides on, I'll use some long screws so they go well into that particle board because that's not the strongest stuff in the world for holding screws. So I get these little uh, sides brad nailed on here and glued. And And I'll probably still put some glue clamps on those just to make sure. Yeah, the bottom's kind of nasty looking, but we're not looking at that part. Okay, now the next dilemma I have is uh, my drawer slides I have. I have ones that are too long and I have some that are too short. So I may have to go get a pair of drawer slides for this to get them the right length. Okay, I got the uh, shelf made and the clamps off of it. I gave it a little bit of a rough sanding to uh, get any of the rough edges off. I uh, installed the drawer slides and have it mounted and so now it slides out and I got almost full extension. I couldn't get a, a completely full extension one at the local home stores here. I don't normally buy drawer slides there because they're so expensive but that was my only choice. I needed an odd size, an 18 inch, so slides in and out just fine. So next, uh, I gave this a rough sanding, knocked all the uh, sharp edges off of it. And so next I need to make a door. And in looking through all my scraps of stuff, I don't have any pieces of three-quarter inch plywood big enough to make this door. I'm going to have to cut a full sheet down, unfortunately. I uh, kind of hate to do it for a 20-inch square, but uh, I don't really have anything else to make it out of. And I do want to use the three-quarter inch plywood because I'm going to be making a door with a 3 8 overlap. So it'll be rabbited in 3 8 of an inch and it'll overhang 3 8 of an inch and I'll round the corners on it. Because I'm going to use 3 8 offset hinges 
and that makes a little bit more of a dust tight fit on here to try to keep some more of that dust out. Uh, another thing you may be wondering on these vents is how am I going to keep dust from entering the vents. I'll either put a piece of filter media on the outside here over the vents and change it periodically or I'll put filter media actually inside the vent. I've got some bulk filter media I can use for that. I just have to remember to change it when it needs it. So I'm going to have to get set up here and uh, cut down a full sheet of plywood. Okay, I have the uh, 3 8 rabbit cut around here as you saw me do. Uh, now I'm going to do the round over. I actually have a bit that fits in my shaper which happens to be clear out in the back shed. If the shaper was in here, I would have threw that cutter on there and run this through and done it in one shot. But, yeah, I guess I'll use a router table. It's nasty out there. I don't want to go out and drag that thing in here. That and it's heavy and the wheels aren't big enough to get across the grass. So, yeah, we'll do it this way. So I'll get this router table set up here. I got a 3 8 round over bit in it. Now since uh, this has a rabbit on it, it can't follow the bearing. So I'm going to have to set the fence here so that where the bearing would be would just barely rub this ruler. And I'll do a test cut on a piece.
looks like this. Just a little bit of minor sanding there on the corners and I'll be ready to put a finish on it. Okay, give you a little bit of a demonstration here um, how this door is going to set. This rabbit set inlaid and the door will be flush on the front like this. And there's a, uh, the hinges I use, as I said, are what they call 3 8 offset. So you'll be able to see the hinge on the outside here on one side, and then I'll have a knob over here. But this uh, should make a nice tight fit. They're self-closing hinges, so it should make a, a, a tight closure. So now I just need to do some sanding and uh, put some kind of finish on this. And you really don't want to watch somebody sand. That's kind of like watching paint dry. So I'll get this thing sanded and try to decide what kind of finish I'm going to put on it. At least on the front, I'm probably not going to do anything with the sides because that's underneath the cabinet. But I want to put something on the front here to kind of sort of match what's over there. It's a hodgepodge of things, but uh, I even got two different kinds of plywood here, but that's okay. Well, for something that's just supposed to be uh, what I call shop furniture, I guess I got a little bit carried away and uh, put a Danish oil stain on it. And I'll let this dry and probably... Uh, coat the, at least the front of it with uh, some spar varnish because we do get a lot of moisture in here. This is going to be down close to the floor and it could get splashed. So uh, I've got a lot of marine varnish here. I think I've got pretty much a full quart of uh, spar marine satin and I'll probably be putting a few coats of that on there. But I guess uh, sit here and watch some stain dry and uh, enjoy a couple of these. Okay, I got a couple coats of spar varnish on there, and uh, then it's time for the hinges. So I've got these laid out an inch and a half in from each end, just to make it uniform. Made some marks where their hinges are going to go. And one thing that you definitely need to do is drill a pilot hole. And if you have one of these, they call them insty bits, it's a self-centering bit. As you can see here. And that centers on your screw hole so that when you drill it exactly centers where your screw is going to go. And you want to make sure you don't overdrive your screws. These are little guys. <clears throat> you can see with this offset here what I meant by a 3 8 overlay hinge. If you've never seen those before. A little bit of a close-up of it. This is made to set down into the rabbit. Then this overlays on the back of the door. And this part here mounts in the front. You'll notice it's cocked back a little bit. It's self-closing. It has a spring in it. So there's wide open and then it'll spring shut. I always do one screw to get the hinge set, then I'll go back and do the others. And just like that, we got the hinges mounted on the door. Next be to put the door in the cabinet. Okay, we're putting the door in the cabinet. I've got a little, little thin strip of wood here I'm going to set down here so that I'll have clearance and that the door won't drag. It'll split the difference between the two sides.
Okay, so we have a door. Should open. And it should go 180, and it does, and that'll be perfect. Actually, it goes a little more than 180. I can take my little strip out of there now. Now I need a handle on that door and a little less dust around here. There we go. Now get me a knob. Yeah, I think about there. That's probably overkill, but it was quicker than grabbing a Phillips screwdriver. There we go. Now, get the printer set in there, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, got the printer in there. It's just like that. Of course, this will be screwed down because the weight of this will make the cabinet tip when I pull this out. It'll be easily accessible, and it pulls out far enough that I can use the scanner here if I need to. And I'm going to put filter media inside the vents. I've got all the vents mounted. This should work out quite well. Laser printers are somewhat heavy. So I needed that heavy duty shelf down there. And just like that, that's how we make a dust proof cabinet for a laser printer. And it's going to seem strange not having this printer sit right here because there's been one there for the last 20 years. But now I have a flat surface, and you know what I do with flat surfaces? I'll put something on it, guaranteed. Probably some kind of junk. Uh, anyway, uh, this type of thing, uh, yeah, you probably don't necessarily need a dust proof cabinet for a printer, but I'm hoping it'll give you some ideas for any other type of uh, maybe small cabinet you need, or uh, some type of small enclosure, or a ventilated enclosure, or maybe just give you a little bit of an idea on how to build a small cabinet. I uh, went into more detail on this than I usually do on our videos, but that's for the uh, beginning crowd and everybody begins somewhere. So if you got a little something out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. That always helps the channel. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop. See you in the next one.